We are go for liftoff in T minus 30. Hit the record button. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Italo's Black Talk Radio. This is Italo speaking, and I have somebody very, very positive, because his name is Positive, Dave. Dave Positive or Positive Dave? Uh, any way you want to look let at me, it. Let me, let me ask my guest. Hey, the, the username was originally supposed to be like a blood type. Are you O positive or are you Dave Positive? Ah, okay. But it, came, it became yeah, something I didn't, else. I didn't... Yeah, because I was like, positive, they, they positive. I think it's either way. I'll, I'll right. put the information below if you guys want to take a look at his TikToks, who are, which is either, either you're going to get funny jokes or you're going to get very inspirational, very deep thoughts. So I wanted to ask you, what was the inspiration to to do? What was your inspiration to do that? Because I think I, I came across your live first about a month ago, and I like what you were talking about. Uh, you were you're always very positive. You're always very, you know, talking to the uh, to your to your followers, and I thought that was actually pretty cool what you were saying. So, but yeah, it's been it's been a while, so I forgot what we were talking about. But what makes you so positive? That's my question. I, I, I guess it's, you know, growing up, life, I grew up in a divorced household and I saw a lot of negativity. And I, I knew it was up to me how I changed my perspective on things of how I want to see the world. And a lot of times we get so caught up in our own perspective and not seeing other people's perspective on things that makes you, mm. you change how you look at life. And okay. I think your day is what you make of it. And I start, I'm not a morning person, but once I get going, I start putting that in thought in my head. I'm like, you know what? We're going to make this a good day. We're going to make it productive. We're going to make it positive. This is how we're going to do it. Right. Actually, that's one thing I was hearing because um, I have the same, <clears throat> the same mentality in the sense that um, I can wake up and it could, it could be the, either a great morning already or, or you can actually, it's like kind of like a workout. They, they were telling me, or I heard it somewhere. It's like a workout. You have to actually work at it. Like you're not going to have all, you know, a positive outlook on life. As soon as you wake up, you're going to be like, you know, I'm amazing. This is all going to be great. It's sort of like working out. It's like you have to, you know, work out, get out there. Uh, take a shower, do your thing. So I think it's sort of like your mental, your mental, it's like a muscle that you're working with. One your, thing you is know, like, brain. I had a boss who retired last month and he, he taught me this from my first began. He said, make it part of your daily routine. And before you know, it, it's not going to be an effort no more. It's just going to be part of what you do every day. It's just part of you. And it's, it, you know, it grows on you, and it's, it, it's something different at first, but once you start doing it for so long, it's just there. Okay. I see a guitar behind you. You, you play guitar? Yeah, I, I, I have about four guitars, and I play guitar. Um, I haven't got got there yet with TikTok yet, but one day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I saw, your, I saw you doing it on your one of your uh, TikToks. I just... Yeah, I just thought about it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's the that's the yeah. I, I got a, I got a four back here. Um, I started playing violin when I was about twelve, and I slowly graduated to the guitar and stuff. And it's it's you know it's wow. like music is it should be like an extension of who you are. Right. I mean, I wish I had play anything. I don't. I don't play. Although the, I actually I did, I did compose a song. Um, half, half of the song was mine. The one that you're gonna hear on the podcast is actually my composition, but 
I don't know how to play anything. I, I, maybe I played a tambourine uh, and the cajon, and that's about it. Uh, anything, percussions, I guess, drums, you know, if you're gonna have a drum roll, whatever. Uh, yeah, I, could, I guess I could get into that. But guitar is pretty hard. I tried to do that for about, I think I quit after a month. I just gave up. Well, never too late. You always can pick it up. And, and this day and age, we got YouTube now that can teach us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but you know, it was more, it wasn't my calling at the time. Right. And I, re I realized I can pick it up later. But yeah, at the time, it wasn't the right time. Let's just put it yeah. that way. But. But yeah, it's great that you, you you picked it up when you were twelve. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's 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 music is a big part of my daily life. It's my motivation, my fuel. Okay, do you play with a band or just by yourself? Or back in high school, I did, and um, it just. You know, you grow up, you get, you have a family. It's, it's, it's really hard to do that kind of things like when you were younger. So I just do it on the side, kid around. And I, 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 since I was in middle school, I, I used to keep a diary and I still do, but it's not your typical diary. It's like what happened that day. But when you write, I'll make songs about it. But how you write that song and how one person perceives that song can be a completely different thing you know for you it was like the best day of your life but to another person listening to it that could be the song that got them over that hump in their life or it could be a passing of a loved one and, and it was their motivation to get them through the day that's just really cool how music works yeah so what what song or what artist it sticks out right now because I know that asking a question like that, random question, like, what's your favorite song? It's like, right. you know, come on, I have so many, but what's one there's artist song, that really sticks I out? Wrote. There's a song I wrote and it's called Time. And it basically it's, it talked, it basically talks about when we're younger, time seems to just slug along. Like we can't wait to turn 18. We can't wait till Christmas morning. We can't wait for this. As we get older, it just seems like time does not slow down now. And it just talks about time is faster than you think. And I always, I'm telling a lot of people in my lives every day, a lot of people come in, they're struggling, having, having a bad day. And I'm like, there's going to be one day in time you're going to look back on today and smile. Because if it wasn't for the hardship of today, it wouldn't build you to the better person of tomorrow. And I'm a big believer in we have bad days for a reason to remind us of how good good days are. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's all about perspective. I'm looking at it, you know, sometimes we need that little day to keep us in check. Hey, you know, it's a bad day, but I came this far in life. What's going to prevent this day from being any different for me. Mm. True. Cause I've been actually, okay. So I've been on a little journey uh, in the last few days, actually, I, I will admit it that it was actually recent, recently that <clears throat> I discovered that I could revisit my younger self, but not in the sense of just remembering or, or you know, because it's always there, you know, the past is always there. Uh, depress depression, especially when you're depressed, you know. But I discovered that I never uh, went back there with an, an adult mind, because now I'm 48. So now I'm seeing myself as a 48 year old, looking at that eight, eight year old kid and what he went through, right? And he's telling me, this is what happened and this is what happened next and this is what happened next. And I kind of blocked it out of my mind because was, there's a lot of trauma and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then, Recently, I discovered I, I forgot all my teen years, my teenager, you know, and how much more happened. And today I was writing, I was like, I totally forgot about that. And it's like, um, I'm there just observing. And he's like, he's show, it's, and I was telling this to somebody that I feel like a ghost writer, like I'm writing, but I'm not really writing. Is somebody else telling me the story. 
right. and you remember what happened next. You know, it's like, it's interesting. I don't know. I don't know if this happened to you, but that's oh, happening right now. Is. I'll have, I'll, I'll be working midday and I'll have flashbacks, you know, and I'm, and I'm ADHD too, you know, pretty obvious there, but I'll, I'll daydream a lot. And, you know, it's, there's always a song that comes back to me because a lot of like everybody suffers to it with anxiety to a certain extent. And mine is always about, okay, what's tomorrow bring? What's the next day? And I had, I have to pace myself, but there's a song and it was called, a uh, letter to me by Brad Paisley. And it basically, it's basically him writing to himself back when he was 16. And he says, I can prove it by the skull can and the playboy underneath your bed. And it just, you know, you're saying, Hey, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. I promise you it's, it's at it, the present. It's going to be worth it. I promise. And it just, it makes me think. It makes you think mm. on stuff like that. Yeah, and actually, it's, it's cool that you're mentioning the specific, specifically, specifically, you know, the Playboy magazine or like today. So I was ta I was just writing, and then sometimes you have a problem with the time timeline, right? Because it has to be it has to be for me. It's important to know how old was I, and then I anyway. So and I remember one time that was. Uh, I was getting evicted of this place, or we were getting evicted of this place. But before this happened, which was a traumatic moment, I remember seeing the movie Never Ending Story in theaters. And for some reason, I wrote that down. I'm like, wait a minute, that gives me an idea. That's great, because now I can look at, and I'm like, how old were you when you were in 84? And that, that was the, when the movie came out. And I love that movie. And I'm like, I was 12. Okay, so my 12 year old is telling me these things. That's amazing. Because I always go back to the evening, like what happened when you were five or six. And I'm like, no, every, every uh, stage of your life tells you something about yourself. So that's, I thought that was interesting. Exactly, exactly. And it's, it's almost like, a, like you see a timeline, a time stamps of things, like the never in the story you're talking about. It's okay, I know for sure this was the, this was the timeline of the date of this. So you can kind of go from there in a way. It's almost mm -hmm. like a checkpoint. Right. Or if, or if a song comes on and you're reminded of something, you're like, that song reminds me of high school or prom night or whatever, right? right? It's, it's like same thing with food, like certain foods you eat. Like it brings you back the first time you ate it, where you were at, who you were hanging out with, everything. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that's something I just discovered. I'm like, okay. Now I can tell time. I can, it's like a time traveler thing. It's like, what, where's the newspaper at? You know, like when they exactly, exactly. Oh, like this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just an amazing thing. But tell me your your story about um, where do you grow up? Because I everybody keeps asking me about the act. I now have an accent too, so I'm just asking where is your accent? My accent's from Peru, so my parents are Peruvian. And so that's that's how that came out to be. So I'm sorry that I'm well, speaking no, so fast because fine. this is the first time we're talking face to face. Um, so <laughs> uh, I'm originally from Pennsylvania. Um, my parents divorced when I was about 11. I moved down here when I was about 15. And I slowly got somewhat of a Southern accent. And I love I loved it here so much. I just stuck around. I ended up getting married, you know, having a family. And the people down here are way different from where I grew up. It's like when they talk about Southern hospitality, they mean it. But it's, you know, I, I go back to Pennsylvania every so often. You know, you never forget where you came from. But it's like I consider Arkansas home. It's just the people, the atmosphere. I don't like the heat, but besides that, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, right now it's actually kind of cold here in California, but it's a little bit windy for some reason today. It's, you know, winter's coming. Winter's coming. We, we lived in California yeah, between 05. So. We lived out there between 04 and 06 in Temecula. And uh, oh yeah, I think I asked you that yeah, before. Yeah, and, uh, you were telling me to make I remember. Up. I remember like 
buying a surfboard for the first time. And I'm like, why is everybody wearing a wetsuit? It's the beach. I'm like, dude, it's cold. I'm like, no. And I walk out there. I'm like, sure enough, it's cold. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's coming oh, yeah. from Alaska. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's freaking cold here. Yeah, actually, I don't, I don't, I hardly go in the, in the, in the ocean here. I will have to go to uh, Puerto Rico or the Caribbean. That's the best place to, uh, yeah, over here is that. I don't even go to the water for some reason. And growing up in Peru, I, I was living by the beach. So I can just walk to the beach. Um, so for me, you know, it's not a big deal. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So tell me your, how, how has your TikTok experience been because how did you start it during the pandemic or was it before? Um, it was it was a couple months after the pandemic. Um, and see, I really had no intention of joining, but my brother, he was on TikTok for a while. And he, um, he, uh, he does the nurse videos. He's a, he's a nurse RN and I'm a car technician. He's like, you need to make videos about, you know, working on cars, funny stuff, or how, how to videos. I'm like, yeah, okay. And midway through it, I'm like, you know, there's so much more to a person than what they do for a living. And I'm like, you know, I have a life outside mm -hmm. of work. And I'm like, I'm just going to be me. I'm like, so many people who get on TikTok, you know, they, they put on this front, they put on an act. I'm like, I really can't do that. So I'm like, you know, it's, and he's like, well, you can't be you. It doesn't work that way. I said, well, I guess it's not for me then. I said, well, just, I'm going to do it. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm like, you know, I'll lucky if I'll ever hit 1,000. And three months on, all of a sudden, it just blows up. And I'm like, what do I do? You know, like, I didn't expect any of this. And it just, it, it's, it's right. a wild ride because I didn't know that me being me is helping other people get through their issues or, um, you know, with, with depression, anxiety, or panic. Um, I think it was, I think I found out what I really wanted to do on there is like my second month on there, I was making stupid videos, doing stupid things. I have this elderly lady comment a bunch of my videos and say that, she thought about taking her own life. She put the pills down after she saw a couple of my videos. Wow. So I messaged her immediately. And she, she was going um, a bunch of, like a landfall factor for different things happening. And when I read that comment, it, it went right through me. I started bawling like a baby because I'm like, okay, this is my calling. This is what I, I really need to be doing. And, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's not the, how many followers you get, how famous you get, but if it's, if it's one person who sees it, who helps them, I know I'm doing, I need to do. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a tough one. Um, I haven't come across anything like that. I, I have a come across people that are like yourself. Um, and that, yeah, at the beginning, I, I wasn't doing what I wanted to do either which is talking to people. I love talking to people uh, and learning their stories. Um, but there was one particular person. <clears throat> Can you hear me a Or am I mumbling? Oh, okay. Yeah, there was one, one person that I interviewed. <clears throat> well, I wanted to interview her. Uh, but something told me not to. Um, all I had to do is just listen to her. And um, she knows who she is. Uh, I think I needed to, it empowered me because I need help too. You know, I need help, mental health. Everybody needs therapy. <laughs> but I think it wasn't about me anymore. It wasn't about making a podcast. It wasn't about, you know, it was more, I was there just for her. And then, and then of course, you don't never know these people from TikTok. They're total strangers. And so something told me, like, I have to talk to her because she was on someone's live and she was saying how um, depressed she was and how harassed she was by her ex and, and she, her phone was tapped and FBI. And I'm like, 
whoa, so much going on. But she sounded very down at the end of that phone call. And I looked her up and I'm like, you know, I want to talk to you about being on the podcast and you, your, you know, your story is really interesting. But then as I was talking to her, I'm like, no, I, I'm just going to be here just to talk to you. Because right. that's all you need is to be there for somebody. Exactly. And it's, and I, I was, we, 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 one way or another, COVID always gets brought up in the lives. And what people don't realize, it's not the disease itself that's causing issues. It's the side effects of self-isolation, loneliness, depression, anxiety, you know, toxic relationships, having to stay home with that, you know, because a lot of people go to work to get away from it. And, you know, it's, that's why a lot of the videos are, like I, I want, like almost like I want to look in your soul and tell you that you're worth it. That wherever you're going through, you know, my inbox is always open, and I do my best to to respond to people because some people aren't as, I guess, blessed as a lot of us to have somebody come home to tell about their problems. Some some people are at home alone and their thoughts are you know going rapid. You know, it's I try to I try to put myself in other people's shoes of how can I approach this to help them? Because I think the hardest thing people can do is ask for help because they don't want to be an inconvenience to others. So if you give Mm -hmm. them that invitation of, hey, I'm really here for you, you know, just hope they take that offer. Mm -hmm. Was there, was there something in you that, so you said that was your calling, right? Uh, Was there a moment in during your life, during your own experience that made you realize you're more empathetic than most people because I can see that you're very empathetic. Well, um, um, I, I don't want to like describe it. I don't know. Oh no, it's it's. I guess I noticed it was when, when writing music, listening to music. You know, it's there's a certain song in all of us that hits us on a whole new level, and I didn't really know I was I was that until. I, I I read that comment, and it's almost like I could feel feel her pain. I could feel her emotion that she was going through, and it's like it's it's like I was meant to see it at that time for that reason. Right, that's pretty cool. So yeah, uh, it's your it's this, and I have different different people that I go to in the mornings uh, in TikTok. Um, I love it because it's very, uh, it's like a channel. Like I, I don't have TV right now in, at this moment. Um, so it's helping me to connect to real people like yourself. Because um, sometimes, you know, or well, many times when you watch TV, you feel like you're being programmed and you're being, you know, told what to think. And so I turned that off, or actually I don't have a TV here for, for some reason, I don't want it. So I'm like, no, you know what? And actually, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it a habit. You know how they say, I don't know if you said it or somebody else, if you, 28 days before you can form a new habit. So I think that's going to be my new habit. It's not having a TV for a while. Yep. So I don't know See, if I'm right there with you. I have not and watched of course the everybody news. Tells me like, have... Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you sorry, off. I'm ahead. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, they all tell me, they'll tell me that you should watch this on Netflix. I'm like, I know. I know. One day, no worry. <laughs> like I was interviewing somebody from Selena, the series, and she was telling me great things. I'm like, I'm, I'm sure it's great. I just, right now, I don't want to <laughs> go back to it. Anyhow, that's it. <laughs> it's, it's, since the pandemic happened, I have not turned on live television because it's the same thing, a different day of of a death toll or infected toll. It's, can we not talk about anything that's going to make our day better? We already had to work. We already had to wake up this morning to go to work. We had to be around it all day. I don't have to want to be reminded of it. Let's talk about something good. That's that's that part became my my regimen. The last six months, I haven't watched the news. I haven't watched political stuff. Like political stuff can divide people because 
if you see that side of TikTok where they talk about politics, like you could, you could, you're like, you, like I found my new best friend on there, for example. But as soon as you found out they're from the opposite party, you look at them in a totally different way. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people can't be respectful of, you know, that's your belief. Hey, I, you know, I respect you. a lot of people can't do that. So it's better not to even bring it up. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just big upon letting people know, be a free thinker. Think for yourself. Don't be told what to think. Because to me, free thinking, it, it, it's free. as like it says. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of like the way I, I feel like TikTok is very um, sensitive. Um, too sensitive, <laughs> in my opinion, uh, to the point where I don't feel comfortable speaking in, t- in TikTok. Uh, as a, in, the, in the live <clears throat> so I, I I'm like okay I tried it a few times and I, I didn't get a ban or anything but I always have it in the back of my mind I'm like is this gonna get me banned exactly. <laughs> I don't know it's, it's you know I, I, I'm, not, I'm very like I, I don't get angry like like explosive but, but I can get you know PO'd and you know, it's it, there's some things people will come on there like, like every so often you'll have that here to come in your life, and of course they're wanting that attention, they're wanting that feedback, of acknowledgement, and it's. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm inviting you to stay if you want to stay. I said, you know, it's, let's not talk about this, you know, in a polite manner. If they continue doing it, my mods were really good about. You no, know, you know, it's, this is probably not the side of TikTok you need to be on type of thing. It's, but it, it can be touchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I made a. I made a video a few weeks ago and it got banned for sexual acts. And I'm like, it was a, it was a, a fake boner, <laughs> but, I, but, but I'm like, well, you have all these women on TikTok okay. shaking their butt half naked, yeah. but that's okay. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like it was like I was doing any acts. It was like well, I was knocking a coke can over because of it. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, everybody's—I don't know if you've seen this one. The the, the latest uh, trendy one is the one that's looking at her cat and at her dog. But next to the cat is this big old dildo, uh, wooden dildo. Have yes. You seen it? Yes. <laughs> so that that's been going around. I'm like, okay, that can go on, but you know, whatever. It's, and all the wob dance and all those, you know, thirst traps. You know, I'm not the one, you know, pout and cry about. It. I'm just going to move on with my life and take a different approach at it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, I used to fall into the trends for some reason, and I was so worried about numbers, and I was so worried about. Checking it, every, I was very bad. I was very bad with TikTok for for a minute. I think it was around October. I was very obsessed. So um, was that? I, I learned when I first joined. I was I was obsessed. It was like twenty four seven. I was on, and I'm like, yeah. I was trying too hard. And the moment I just sit back, let everything go, just have fun doing it, and actually being yourself being a support everything happens for a reason it, it all plays out and mm. you know it's i have a lot of fellow tiktokers who come on my life who are just starting off hey can you shout me out hey uh can you yeah. you know give me a promo and i said the biggest promo i can do for you <laughs> is giving you this advice right here and, and i you know be yourself have fun yeah. um don't try to be anybody else. Don't try to, just because it's working for somebody doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And at right. the end of the day, you want people to be authentic followers and like you for you, not because of a follow a party or going to this person's live, you know, follow for followers. Right. You want people like you for you. Yeah. And if people unfollow you, okay, then it wasn't meant to be. You move on. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I got a lot of followers too because of the political climate at the time and the uh, Black Lives Movement. And so I was into, you know, and I'm still, you know, I'm supporting of those, um, not supporting of BLM, but I support uh, the concept of it. So, you know, we should care right. about Black Lives, Black Lives do matter. 
<clears throat> and police said brutality is still going on. So I, I'm I'm behind what I put out. So I never took anything right. down because right. I'm, you know, I still believe in it. But it wasn't my. I was attracting very negative. Like I already said this before, I was attracting very negativity, a lot of negativity from TikTok. Right. So once I started doing, I was and I tried to do poetry, but poetry, woo, with right. right. And you know, it's, I remember find a way uh, to introduce it. <laughs> see, it's and see, you know, it, it's okay to stand up for something. It's okay to believe in what you want to believe, and it's. I remember hearing this quote, and it says. Stand up for something strong enough that it, that it pisses people off, because you 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 stand up for 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 so, for so much, you're willing to take that 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 crap people will throw at you for standing up for it. You know, and it's we all have that right to believe what we want to believe, and that's fine. You know, we, we we're all individuals. We all have that free that free mind to think what we want to. You know, and it's yeah. I have I have so many different friends on TikTok and it's it's incredible the platform it's straight people gay people lgbt um trump supporters Biden supporters independent supporters but we're all getting along because we respect each other and that's what i like about it. it's um it's that broad spectrum that because positivity is universal it doesn't know a religion it doesn't know a race it doesn't know, um, you know, if you're. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, gay, straight. It doesn't matter. It's it's so universal, and you know, we we're all on this earth together, and we can be our biggest friend or we can be our biggest enemies. Hmm. So, what was the well? Have you read anything that taught you about positivity? Was there just a natural thing to you, or did you actually find something that you? Um, Growing up, my dad. Oh yeah. Growing up, my dad was big, um, big in business, big in motivational speaking. He was, um, he wasn't a motivational speaker, but he always listened to it to bring up his morale for work, how to, um, change his perspective on life to be better. Because it's kind of like you ever hear of Einstein's definition of insanity doing the same thing day in day out expecting a different result you can't do yeah. that unless you have, you have to change some things and i said that um, to somebody today <laughs> yeah and it's um i mentioned that to I somebody remember, today <laughs> really um yeah. and my dad my, it was my last week in high school before i, I was graduating and my dad wrote on a post-it note go above status quo and i had that on my fridge i didn't know what it meant at the time i had to look into it but it's that's been my motto since high school. It's um, always the back of my mind. Okay, if they want it done in ten minutes, get it done in five minutes. Um, but you know, have pride with everything you do. But know the difference between pride and ego. Never carry an ego because ego gets you in trouble. And I just. And as I, as I, cause I used to be the quiet kid in school, surprisingly, <laughs> but as I grew up, I'm like, you know what? I want people to like me for me, not for a person I'm trying to be. And I want people to love themselves because when they start loving themselves, they're going to start a ripple effect with other people. And that's how that all started. So you're not the fake it till you make it kind of person. It's full throttle all the way. <laughs> okay. You know how they say, you know, fake until you make it or whatever. It's like, mm. no. It's, <laughs> it you know, good. it's, it's kind of like my whole life I had people tell me I couldn't do this, couldn't do that. You know, you're ADHD. You can't sit still long enough. You don't have the attention span. It's you're either going to let that get to you or it's going to be your fuel to your fire to like, you know what, I'm going to prove you wrong and I'm going to prove myself wrong. And mm. it's that, and that's, I, I made a video about it. Probably, I think it was Friday. It's stop trying to prove other people wrong, prove yourself wrong. And that's the biggest accomplishment you ever can do. Mm. Because everybody keeps saying <clears throat> they have a ADHD, uh, but I think to a, to a degree, 
social media and, and TikTok, especially, has uh, done that to me. Like, I, I cannot stay still and I cannot watch anything longer than a minute. And I'm like, where are you going with this? It's been a minute. <laughs> like, it's programming. So, if it doesn't grab my attention, <laughs> yeah. If it was a movie, I'd be like, ah, next, ah, the next movie, <laughs> you know. I got used to it. So it's like, maybe I am, maybe HD too. But what is what is some of the things that you notice that were really, you know, happening to you? You're like, well, okay, that's kind of weird. Or was it was it just did you just deal with it? The condition. Well, again, I'm sorry. <clears throat> the condition you have, ADHD. Was that something that came to you? Or has, has that always happened? Or was it a time that you said it was actually causing you to not um, learn something or? Um, it was early on, like, like I was five years old. Um, I got diagnosed with it. And I, I remember I was like a guinea pig getting different pills, you know, to fit through school, you know. And finally, my senior year, I, they put me on a new pill. I was falling asleep in class. Um, I was always drowsy. And I um, I took myself off. It didn't tell my parents nothing. And they saw my grades actually get better. And I found out it was a big portion of, mm. you have to start taking fault for your own actions. You can't blame it on this. You can't blame it on that. You have to start, you know, not self-medicating, but, hey, you know what? <clears throat> It's my problem. I can fix this. And it's, I can, I'm not saying that it's, it's a fix for everything, but a lot of it's self control and self discipline. Hmm. Interesting. You know, it's, it's, I want to actually talk about this a little bit more. Do you mind doing a part two? Because it's almost like yeah. two minutes before I get cut off here. You want to take like a 10 minute break and then we'll come back? Is that cool uh, with you? That's fine. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Where were we? Um, so yeah, um, it's interesting you were talking about that because um, like somebody I know, it told me about, he was diagnosed with having a learning, learning disability and he had to go through the whole thing, the whole programming, um, you know. And it was basically at the end of the day, it was the mother wanted to get something from the government. So in order to do that, she had to convince him that he had a problem. And that's how that happened. Um, but at the, at, he realized he wasn't a learning disability. He was just, it's a, it's, people have different ways of learning things. Right. And it's you saying that there's, I have, I, I have went back to my high school because I was in special education for the ADHD. And I, every so often I go back to high school and I'll talk to the, the graduating class or the seniors who are in there. And it's, and I'll call the school system out. And I'm like, it's kind of like you guys are teaching the same thing to everybody. But the problem is you guys are not teaching the way the kids are learning. And on top of that, it's like, it's kind of like trying to have, it's kind of like having a monkey and a fish. Okay. And in this exam, you both need to climb that tree. Well, of course the fish cannot climb that tree. Mm -hmm. So you, we have, I, I, like, I, like school needs to change the way that they're teaching. Because me being ADHD, I'm more of a visual hands-on versus reading it and talking about it. And it's it's right. kind of like... I'm the same way, yeah. I'm the same way. I'm right. a hands-on kind of person. Like I'll, They can tell me every, every, all the theories that they want to throw, oh, how, are they, how to do this and that, but show me. If you show me, I know how to do it. Right. And it's kind of like <clears throat> we, all, we all were guilty as back in the school. We're never going to use these formulas. We're never going to, you know, arithmetic, you name it. I use it every single day at work. But if they would have showed me of, because they're not showing us examples of when we would be using these things. 
So a little car talk. Let's just t talk about, um, you know, typical car engines are measured in liters. So in order to get your liter, it's basically the combustion chamber. You're taking your bore, which is long ways, by your stroke, which is short ways. And then you're, it's, it's a, base, a formula, and you're t timesing it, then you're dividing it by a certain degree, and that's what makes that. Now, if they would have showed me that description back in school, it wouldn't have made perfect sense because I wouldn't know how to use it wrongly. But it's like I was like, yeah. I was telling you, my wife had a coworker who has ADHD, and she'd been convinced her whole life that, oh, if I tell people I have ADHD, they're going to feel bad for me. They're going to do my job for me. And I said, no, you need to tell us your superpower because you're given these abilities for a reason. They're not a disability. It's an ability to do better, to do things other people cannot do because you have that extra kick behind you, you know, to say. <laughs> right. Uh, and just like that, you know, there's always, what you know, something personal that they, they told me back, back when I was uh, going through a lot of depression and a lot of anxiety, a lot of things like that. And basically, I was just tired of working for the company and doing something that wasn't creative. It wasn't motivating me. It was, you know, so I was, I was diagnosed bipolar bipolar 2 and i mean i was happy to to know that there's a name for what i had right and that that was the initial initially that's what i was thinking i'm like well that's good that i know that now and i can deal with it now 4 years later i'm like what the hell was she talking about i am not bipolar <laughs> Has she learned about what was going through in my head or had she investigated a little bit more, but she was just so, so quick at giving me a diagnosis. And even she said, she's like, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm a therapist. This should be a psychiatrist that tells you or a psychologist. Right? right. So she wasn't really trained to do that initial, initial uh, diagnosis. And then, but then I, I was like, you know, and now, like you, like you said, I was using it as an excuse too. Well, I'm bipolar, so whatever. But right. then I'm like, I wasn't bipolar. I was just going through a lot, and I was the situation that I was going through was was very, um, you know, it was just situations that were going through my life. So at the end of the right. day, now that you know how to also uh, use my mindset to change thinking, my way of thinking. Right? And, you know, it's amazing that I'm 48 and I'm still learning all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm still learning. Up until today, I was learning something. So that's interesting. Exactly. That's, to me. But that's lifestyle. If, you know, you're learning every single day. And it's, that's, that's you know, that's the beauty in it. It's, um it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's not bad to know about, about a disease, a disorder, because you learn, okay, just because this is working for this person doesn't mean it's going to work for me. I'm going to have to approach it a different way. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously I know I can't sit still. I know I have, to, I, have to, I have to keep little clicks on my head of checkpoints. Okay, I did this. I got to do this next. And it's kind of like when you make goals. I make daily goals, I make long-term goals, but in between those goals, I make checkpoints to keep me in line of hitting that goal. Because I'm like, okay, I'm quarter way there, I'm halfway there. It's, mm. it's, we have to approach it differently. Mm. So yeah, like you're saying, it's, it's a superpower. It's a, right. It's the way that you think. I mean, that's bottom line, that's the way that you think. Although you can change the way you think also, but if that's working for you, and you can live with it because it's a, you will never get rid of it. And it's probably a good thing that you're not because it's like you said, it's a superpower. And right. like empath, empathic and, and, people or empaths also have that same ability 
where they feel people's emotions and you feel when somebody says, uh, in you, like you were saying before, you had, you had that call to call that person. You had that, you know, urge to call that person because you knew something was happening. That's a superpower to me. That's like your mind reading that, you know, it's kind of like. Right. Fantastic. Hey. And it's, you know, it's that you, you, it's like, it's kind of like when your wife tells you, hey, are you okay? I'm fine. You know, she's not fine. You know, there's, mm -hmm. you, you pissed her off in some way or form. And now you gotta, okay, what do I, how do I approach it now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have somebody, got, actually somebody's already texted me. She's like, are you, are you feeling okay? Because there's a connection that I have with this person that, he knows when something's going on with me or, or vice versa. So, and it doesn't happen with, with one person, you know, it's just interesting. Um, yeah. And sometimes you feel like you're, you're kind of assimilating somebody else's conditions, right? I don't know if that happened, but yeah. I felt that this way too with my mother or people that I ha have close to me. Yeah, and, it's, and I thought it was my condition. It's not. It was that condition. It's like, like, we all scroll through the For You page on TikTok. And there's some people on there, you can see they're all happy. But you can see, I can see behind their eyes that there's great sadness and they're going through something. Anybody can put on a front. But in order, like, I'm always... Okay, what's what's the reason for them making this video? There's a reason why they're doing this, and I can like I message random people and there sometimes I'm like, hey, are you okay? I know I'm a random stranger, but I I feel like you know that's you're going through something, and sometimes they'll open up to me and I'll talk with them, you know, because sometimes it's they that they, they get they think they feel better for trying to help other people, and mm. it's you know that that's that's it. their that's the release and it's I got like there's a bunch of people on I like I can feel it and I'm like I'm like I can't just stand here and not do anything I, I at least have to attempt to reach out to them yeah. and it's you know it's your gut instinct never proves you wrong though it's I, I've came across people who've been suicidal people who have suffer depression or loss and they even came across scammers and it's you you it's it, it it's it's scary but at the same time it's rewarding because you, you're put in that position for a purpose hmm. what does your wife think about your superpower or what, how you're helping like people TikTok. random people that you don't know <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she's okay. she's not a fan of tiktok she is not a fan of it and and she said that's fine she's like we're, we're, you know we're two different people and that's she said you know it's, she's she, she wants to stay on her facebook i'm gonna i'm gonna stay on tiktok and she said just keep <laughs> me out of keep me out of the videos keep the kids out of the videos and so that, that's no problem and it's 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 yeah. weird yeah. it's weird we can argue we can argue we can argue back and forth why how we don't like facebook right you know, it's the same thing. <laughs> I don't exactly. like Facebook either. <laughs> but it's, it's, I used to. I used to. I am still on there, but you know, it, it's as as a Family Guy. It's I learned how to separate TikTok, you know, from, with family and one to do and not to be on it because I don't. It was one day I don't want to look back and like you know I wasted all this time on TikTok or I should have been spending time with my kids and my wife. And it's, you know, a lot of people um, get caught up in it and it, you know, it's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's how they want to live their life. But I know one day I don't want to look back and regret that decision. And it's, you, I don't, I don't know if you follow the Henry's or not. Scott, Scott D. Henry, uh, his brother, mm, uh, yes, Dan Henry. Dan Henry is a really good example of, of, a, of a family man who balances it almost seamlessly, it seems like, between family, him and his wife do it together. <clears throat> and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really cool to see that there's other people out there who are family guys, who are dads, who are husbands, who are on there and have the same cause. Mm, right. 
because yeah, I've seen I've seen couples that go together and they have their account together. I actually interviewed um, <clears throat> I forget their names right now, but it, their names is blended and win blended and winning, and it's a it's a couple who who goes on and they're always playing joking each, on each other, but in reality they're 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 counselors, so they actually counsel couples. And you can you can tell awesome. they actually enjoy their time together in TikTok. They both have their yeah. I mean, it's a one. I think it's, I think it's one account. So they both are right. on this account. Um, I think it's her her account first. Actually, she she said that. But in, in you know you can tell that they are working together, and they're they're promoting their message to help other couples. And that's that's amazing. I was like, I gotta have you right. Guys. <clears throat> uh, I've, I've so, yeah, absolutely. Like you say, you have a so you have a different message because your your wife is not. You know what I mean? You probably right, and it's yeah, you well, have a different message than by, she does. Right, and it's and that's fine. You know, we it's you know it's my wife always used to say it's you know this is your thunder, this is what you like to do, your thing, and it's you know I, I'm I'm fine with that. It's I don't want. <laughs> it's just I want to make sure the balance, you know, I'm not I'm not stealing away from them type of thing. Yes. And it's um it's uh you see a lot of couples on there. I I've talked to many TikTok couples who are amazing people. Um and they'll all tell you, you know, social media likes to show us the best parts of people. But there's no such thing as a perfect life, a perfect relationship, a perfect marriage. And, you know, it's, but it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's refreshing to see actually couples come out and say that because they will come out and say that. And, yeah. you know, but it's, we're all human. We're not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a certain degree, there's a certain strength on showing their vulnerability, showing how, they're still not perfect, and and that's what you want to see. You know, that's what I want to see when I interview people on, on the podcast. That's what I'm. I'm like, oh yes, please give me that. You know, because not because I, I, you know, you know. Anyway, you know what I'm saying, right? It's. I don't want to. I'm not exploiting you, but right, I want to hear about your experience and. Because you know, we need to talk about our failures. We need to talk about our flaws. Because if it was not for our failures, not for our flaws, how would we ever succeed at anything if we never failed? We're going to fail a million times before we make one success in our lives. But that's part of the journey. That's part of building us up, part of appreciating the success, is failing so many times before hitting that. Mm -hmm. Have you um, – I don't know if you have a Facebook account, but there's actually uh... – an interview that uh, is called Red Table Talk and Will Smith had this um, recently actually he had this um, co-star she was in the Prince of Bel-Air with him <clears throat> anyhow he had her on because he had to tell her something that waited 30 years to to in the making right <clears throat> and he, the defamation and he was talking crap about her how she was a bitch and she was hard to work with and all this, all these things. And um, anyways, he had her on because he had to apologize. But what he didn't know is how much he affected, he affected this actress who is, first of all, she's an African-American. You know how hard it is to find a job if you're difficult or if you hear that you're, you know, if you're a bitch to work with and you're this and that. She said, you ruined my life. You ruined my career for 30 years. And I was thinking, I'm like, okay, it, it's brave for him to do that or, you know, for him to admit it on the air on, on Facebook. But at the same time, I'm like, that's actually cool because you're trying to make amends. Of course, you're going to get more hate mail. You're going to probably get, or probably the opposite. Who knows, right? Because um, it was an interesting episode. I don't know if you've seen it, but I recommend you see it. It's yeah, really hard to, to watch. It's really hard to watch. Like you're like, ooh, that hurts right there. 
Right. It's, it's, we don't want to talk about our failures. We don't want to talk about our, our past mistakes. And, but it's, it makes us. And it's, it's kind of like, like you pick up a book and you see the, the cover and you see the, the last page, you see the end. But you don't see all the, all the momentum, all the things that take up to build up to that point to the end. And it's, I know exactly what you're talking about with all that because it's, it's the journey. It's, it's what makes us. Mm -hmm. And every day it's, my wife is not ADHD. She is probably the most mild mannered, patient people I ever met in my life. And I'm like, how are you putting up with me right now? And she's like, don't worry. I want to slap you half the time, but it's, <laughs> But it's, you know, it's, people have, you know, it's, it, it, it blows my mind every day. I'm like, how are you putting up with me? How, how are you dealing with me? And it's, it's just crazy because, you know, we help each other out. Um, and not just husband and wife, but each of us on this planet are, are, are meant, have different, have different talents to help one another. And sometimes people let those talents go to waste. That's so true. That, yeah, right there. <laughs> That's a TikTok moment that I was waiting for. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, how did I not do what I'm doing now? And I'm just, this is actually part of who I am is the podcast. But yeah, there's so many more layers to where, to get me, to get me where I'm at, you know, and I'm sure you too. So, that's what I like about it because it's like the more you know about a person, you know, if you see people in Hollywood, you see their, how they're so perfect on <coughs> camera and they have like no flaws and you have all this makeup on, but who are they underneath that is what is exactly really interesting to me, you know? And I, and you know, it's, I remember when I was a teenager, I thought that I'm like, okay, these are actors, actors, actresses. I'm like, who are they really? Because their whole life they're 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 playing a role of somebody else, and, you know. And it's do they take part of that character back home with them, make it part of who they are? Because you know right. they they're filming for what for how many how many years you know for one film type of thing. You know does that person get cling to them? Right, right. It's kind of like I don't know if you ever heard the a story about Heath Ledger when he played uh, the Joker. Oh yes. The Joker. Like he went to the gas station, picked up makeup. Like, what would he do if he was actually the character, and oh. locked himself in a hotel room to get into character? Oh, okay. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, it was like I, I I'm a big, big reader. I have a, <laughs> I read so much into things like history, like backstories, and it's. I want to. I don't want to know. It's kind of like. Okay. You're talking about like the layers of somebody. I don't want to know who you are right now. I want to know the moments and the chapters that got you to the point of where you're at in life. Mm, yeah. 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 That's, that's why, yeah. That's why I love doing talk podcasts and yeah, I have a very uh, inquisitive mind and sometimes I'm, it comes I'm across right there, as with you. very, uh, very, um, I think it, it fr sometimes it frightens people and uh, or sometimes it's actually something they don't, they don't expect that from me. Uh, you know, I go to people's lives on TikTok and then that's how I'm, I'm able to di differ di uh, differentiate their persona on TikTok and their real per person sometimes, you know, like you. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's interesting. You. I thought you would be more funny because you're a comedian. I was talking to a comedian earlier. We're not talking, but I was on his life. He was very insightful. And the it was a stupid, funny um, TikTok that coming to him. But I was, I was glad that I stumbled upon it. I'm like, okay, who would have known that they, they had the chicken that was being caressed with a jalapeno? will get me to this guy who's so <laughs> insightful and so funny and but yet very you know very engaging so it's like 
That's what I love it. I'm like, I love TikTok. Oh yeah, and it's, it's <laughs> and, and people. And I'm learning on constant on a constant daily basis. <laughs> We're so quick to judge somebody or categorize them, and it's. I guess that was my turning point of, okay, because I, I, I used to be a big believer in, in second first impressions because let's just say you're a new guy at a job and you're meeting all these people and you're like, oh, this guy's a butthole, this guy's a butthole, you know, he's really arrogant. Maybe you caught him in a stressful part of the day in the heat of the moment, but you actually didn't get to sit down and get to know him for him. You, you saw a, a bad part of him that day. And it's... You know, it's, I'm always a big believer. You never know what goes behind, what's going on behind closed doors. Um, that is very true. You're you know, right. some, of the, some of the funniest people, some of, some of the, the blue verified people we see on TikTok who seem they got everything could be some of the loneliest people out there. And this is why they're doing yeah. it is because they're alone. We don't know what they're going through. You know, true. just because they're verified, they're still a human like we are. Mm -hmm. you know and it's yeah it's actually sometimes a scary thing because I, i've i i i i have followed that they have they ended up having a bad reputation and i'm like oh i can't believe i follow that person now that i know you know how they they get you know, they get found out by people right um, i'm like wow who would have known they seem so you know, encouraging, positive, and, and me or whatnot. At the end of the day, you don't really know them. Exactly, and it's interesting. You know, like I want my TikTok to be authentic as can be. Like each video is a little piece of me, and it, like authentic piece of me. Like I'm a jokester. I'm I, I'm a, a positive person. I'm empathetic. I'm I try to give words of wisdom best I can. I know, like. Because from what I learned, from what someone hasn't probably gone through yet, and it may help them, um, it's it's so hard to capture in 60 seconds a person. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to put a little bit more of me on this TikTok. People get to know me. And it's to me, that's important because you'll hear me say in the lives all the time of, I appreciate every single one of you being here because they're taking the time out of their day to choose to come to your life, come support you, come follow you. And it's, there's so many other people that they could be fought beyond people's lives or they, they could be doing with. It's to me, it, it's, it, it hits me pretty hard because people are taking time out of their day to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. But then again, they're getting a lot of a lot of view, a lot of your content, and I think your content is really great because uh, you can feel a connection with you. And I, uh, you know, I don't know what it is. I, I, we probably have the same the same sixth sense. You know, it's like okay, I feel good with this person. I feel the energy flowing, even though we're on the phone. You know what I mean? Well, you can, you can, you can, well, I'm, I'm right there with you. You can feel that vibe coming from somebody. You know, you always get like, mm -hmm. we always get that sketchy vibe. Like, ah, oh, this person, you know, it's, I don't mind talking yeah. to them, but I'm going to put, you know, I'm going to put my walls up just in case. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those yeah. things. It's, you, you know, when, when people are authentic <laughs> and when they're faking it. Yes, yes. So yeah, in that sense, I, I've, I've learned to develop that with TikTok and with getting, out, getting away from the news as well and getting uh, out of the programming, out of the matrix. <laughs> so I mean the matrix, but at the same time, I don't believe all that I see in the matrix. So it's all, you have to right. discern what's real, what's not real. You have to take a big exactly. deal. Exactly. <laughs> It's, um, I had, there was one video I was going to make and I haven't made it yet, but it was like me making a TikTok and putting the phone down, but still record like a different third view of from what people see on TikTok versus where it really go in their life. And it's, mm, I, you know, so <clears throat> the reason I say that when my parents divorced, my mom rem remarried and he was an abusive alcoholic. It was it was a bad ordeal for me. That's 
part part of the part of the, the past that made me me. And you know, it's we see like this much of a person on TikTok. As soon as they put that phone down, they're back to reality. They got to deal with abusive relationship, um, toxic mess, depression. But this little view they're showing you, you know, it's it, it, it's so hard to pinpoint what people go through because they're only letting you see this much of it. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm in the same boat. Yeah, you are. Like, how do I know you're from a, sometimes it's less than 15, 16, 60 seconds, it's probably a 10 second video. How can you really know somebody for over 10 seconds? Exactly. They can do all these transitions and all these amazing things and you're like, well, okay, all right, flashy. Okay, that's cool, but um, all right, who are you though? <laughs> you got, exactly, and, it's, and people, a lot of people just don't follow you because they like your content, but they like you for you. And, you know, if, if I'm going to do something, I want to put my heart and soul into it. I don't want to be like, ah, eh, yeah, I'm just going to click a button and be done with it. Oh, we're going to have this, this many followers. No, I don't want that. I want authentic. I want yeah. people, pe people who I know who need the support, need, want to be there. You know, mm -hmm. we like my content, but I want them to, you know, be engaged because I, I can say that I'm, I'm blessed. I have mm -hmm. all, all the followers I have are like die hard. Like mm -hmm. they always show up They're They're always commenting and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's hard to find that because you see all these follow parties and stuff on there and people get oh, yeah. discouraged people get discouraged I I'm like I make 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 content that's relatable that you, be, you being you you have it in fun and people are going to see that right right yeah I I, I don't like uh, and they tell me the code at this party that party I'm like it's not really a party that's not exactly gonna, that's not my kind of, I don't be love, like like beaver says I don't I don't feel like I'm in this party <laughs> I know. Exactly. Like, okay, this is a party. All right. Am I old? Am I forty-eight and too old for this? Or uh, is this uh, strange? And it's and it's when see what's crazy when I when I joined TikTok, I was I was introduced to this <clears throat> about fifteen different people that were all friends, and one of them, this was back when they were raising money for this two-year-old with open heart surgery. And we were all right, like we're all going to lives where we're actually raising money, going towards this two-year-old's uh, surgery. And that was another thing that brought me on board of this whole support thing. And um, so I'm like, you know what? When I when I go when I can go live, I'm gonna make my gifts go towards like St. Jude's or um, this year I did Angel Tree Foundation, so kids could have a Christmas because. Us adults, we don't need it. But kids are only kids for, what, 15 years or alive? And then yeah. it's done, you know? So you want to make sure it's good for them. And it's I – w I want to get behind causes that are making a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And right. um, positivity, you know, it could be jokes. It could be smiles. It could be reaching out to people. It, it, it's never ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Positivity can be, yeah, it can be taken any many shapes and forms, but at the end of the day, it's the same message. It's about unity. It's about <coughs> loving yourself. It's the same message. Like I was telling this to somebody. You know, you probably know the secret. I don't know if you ever heard about <clears throat> the secret. Mm -mm. Maybe you have it. Okay. <clears throat> it was a big thing back in the days. It was a. Uh, a documentary and there's different people like uh, Wayne Dyer, uh, Louis Hay, Abraham Hicks, all these different people and they're talking about uh, the power of intention, how you can focus on something, not, not specifically something uh, materialistic like a house or a car or whatever or a wife or a husband or whatever but it's something it's like spiritual you know, something you want to, you know, you want to get 
to the next level. And so you attract right. this, you attract the same people that are, you attract somebody that's in, like, like we're attracting each other and we're attracting other people that are positive and we're doing that thing on, on, on TikTok. Something that people don't realize is happening on TikTok. It's, it's, it's happening every day. I see it every day. So that's a power of intention, I think. It's, and it's attracting people that are like-minded, you know? So anyhow, and I was telling her, I'm like, you know, yeah, I heard about the secret. Um, but I'm like, at the end of the day, it's the same message. It just depends on who's telling you this, this message. You know, it could be me, it could be you, it could be Dave, it could be Mike, it could be whoever. Uh, it's the same message. Sometimes you hear someone else, someone else explain it a different way. And so it clicks and it's still the same message, you know, so... That's what I was telling her. And I was like, yeah. We both you're had right, this. Right. And she was, she was doing charity for feeding the homeless or feeding the hungry. I'm like, see, that's something you can do because you know how to cook and you are, that's your passion. And my passion is a, a little bit different. I can contribute in many other ways. Um, and we, we are both, you know, toward the same goal. But we have to get there in, the, with, in our own ways, you know. Right, right. Yeah. And it's like since I joined, I think it's been like six months I've been on there. I have met so many people on the positive side of TikTok. It's unreal. Um, and their content, it's the same, but not the same. Like their way of approaching positivity is incredible. There's one guy who dresses as a pirate from Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's incredible. And he's an artist. And it's then you have people who, who are obsessed with Kool-Aid. And it's it just, it's, it's incredible of how they're all bringing their different types of message out there. And it's, and it's, it's like, even, even me being a creator myself, I'm like, I can respect this person so much for how they're approaching this because it's, Yes. It's kind of like, I don't know if you ever heard of the, the, the four different types of personalities. Remind me. Because so you I, got, I think I have. <clears throat> so you got analytical, you got driver, you got, uh, I forget the other two. <laughs> but but any, anyway, analytical person obviously is very, they look into things way too much. They read into things. A driver is go, 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 give me the minimal details as possible, and we do this. Mm -hmm. And for work, we had to take personality tests, and we had to um, learn how to read other pe people's personalities and how to approach those personalities. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it was just so cool. It's it just like with positivity, though, you, you learn how people perceive it and how you approach them on it. It's just, it's really, really cool. It's a little trick I learned. It's not psychologically to a point, but it's better communication because there's so much more you could read from somebody than, than words. Some, some, sometimes silence is the best. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you watch, I watch videos, I'm watching their body movements and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, because it tells more of a story than words can. Yes. Yeah, sometimes the body language or the expression of their face, you can tell they're really not there or, or they are very right. engaged. Yes, yes, I, I, I noticed that. But listen, Dave, this has actually been a wonderful podcast. We're coming towards the end. Um, I'm going to put all the information below, but is there anything you want to tell your audience who's watching you or on TikTok or Facebook or actually not, well, whatever platform they're watching or hearing this. Anything you want to say before we wrap it up? Um, I want to say uh, I appreciate you very much for having me on here. Um, I want to I say I appreciate my whole audience, my followers, you guys mean the world to me. I never thought in a million years this would well be, but I appreciate every single one of you. I look forward to many, many years of doing this. Awesome. You didn't see this coming, guys. I didn't see this coming either, so stay tuned for more. I think I'm going to have a, a comedian tomorrow. I'm not going to mention his name, 
too. So let's watch out for him. He's really funny. Uh, anyhow, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. So.